Okay. So hopefully we can still see um, the slide, as I've mentioned. Um, so this evening, this evening is about is understanding that you as parents and carers of year 11 students are now probably starting to feel a little bit nervous, a little bit of pressure just as much as our year 11s. So we decided to hold this event um, to hopefully provide you with some additional information in terms of what we're doing in school to to, to support our, our young pupils to ensure that they they basically have the opportunity to do the best that they can in their future exams. So during this evening I'm going to talk uh, about about a number of different um, different things. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll explain a little bit in terms of examinations and, and what we've spoken to year 11s about already, how, how we've kind of sold the concept of examinations and, and why we feel like they are important. I'll then go on to talk about some of the support, as I said, that we're offering in school, making sure that you're aware of what we have on offer, and then hopefully supporting us to get our students to participate in some of this support just to hopefully nudge them uh, to that success we'll then talk a little bit about revision and memory techniques at home you're probably seeing your students with flashcards mind maps so this is just to give you a little bit of an insight in terms of what we expect our pupils to, to be doing to revise in preparation for these exams. So hopefully to allow you to open a bit of a dialogue with your child to, to hopefully maybe give them some advice or to even just be able to ask what they're doing and just to have a little bit more knowledge yourselves. Finally, we will look and talk about what you can do at home to support that well-being. Obviously, we want our students to be successful academically but we also want them to be successfully successful in themselves and we want them to be happy and feel confident with their exams uh, we know it's a highly pressurized situation so we want to make it as pleasant maybe the, the correct word for them as we possibly can so hopefully some advice on how you can maybe support them at home and again how we're currently supporting them in school. Um, as I mentioned, some of you have set, sent through some questions before the event, so I'll, I'll look to tackle those throughout the presentation, but I will also add that at the end. And as mentioned during this webinar, if you'd like to send in a question, please do so to the email address that was on the link that you have been sent, and I can hopefully answer those at the end as well. So the purpose of this event is knowledge is power. That concept that, as I said, you are at home with the year 11 pupil. You want to make sure that you have a little bit more of an understanding about what they are going through, what is actually happening right now. Hopefully giving you a bit of an insight in terms of their mentality, in terms of their work rate, in terms of are they stressed, are they feeling nervous, are they maybe not doing quite what they should be doing. Having that knowledge, understanding what we are doing in school will hopefully help you to offer some of your own support at home. And that's what we want. We want all of our students to feel like they have that support, to feel like they are being pushed in the correct way because we want them to be successful. We want them to be the best that they can be. So during our discussions with our pupils, we have talked about grades, obviously, grades are important. Um, they are used as, as a comparison. We talk about jobs, we talk about apprenticeships, we talk about how grades are that key indicator, that data indicator in terms of how you are compared to somebody else. Uh, and that is scary, but that is the world that we live in. And we don't want to shy away from that. We want to to get pupils to understand that this is an amazing opportunity to show off. So having those good grades, it is that ticket to your future. It is that ticket to those next steps. So getting that five in English instead of that three or that four, being able to access that level three course instead of that level two, or being able to progress forward uh, later on in life to other additional qualifications. So this is all the information that we spoke to our pupils about. We got them to think about where those grades are going to take them. Are they going to take them to those level two courses that they want to do at college or potentially moving forward onto those level three or even those university courses? The concept is these grades stick with you. So let's 
maximize our time, let's maximize our effort. Let's take this final opportunity to make sure we're as successful as we possibly can be. And I like to talk about the future because we know what our pupils are like. They think about today, tomorrow, maybe next week. I want them to imagine in the next 10, 15 years, where do you want to be? Maybe these exams that they're about to take is going to mould that future career. And we talk about that in terms of being successful. We want these grades to pull people forwards, to give them those opportunities and not to drag them back. So that was the mindset we've spoken to our students about. Getting that mindset correct, these are important. Put the time and the effort in. And that's my big key point that I keep on coming back to my, my year 11s. I want you to try your best. As long as you have tried your best, that's all we can ask. We will nudge, we will help, we will support, but you at the end of the day will be collecting that envelope. We want you to feel like you have done the best that you can possibly do. So we talk a lot about this and you probably hear some of these comments at home. I can't do it. How do I do it? I'll, I'll try to do it. And that is the process that we've worked on through year 11. We know unfortunately students can be quite negative at times. They start off with that I can't or maybe even I won't and sometimes that barrier to I won't is because they feel like they can't. So we try to build up their resilience. We try to build up their skills, their knowledge to give them appropriate tools to tackle those difficult situations. And that's a conversation that obviously you could have at home to be positive, to be proactive, to give that praise. I can see you doing some homework. Absolutely fantastic. I've noticed on Seneca, on Sparks Math, you've been doing your homework. Absolutely amazing. And it's improving that attitude. We want pupils to feel like they can be successful because they can. If they put the time and the effort into anything that they do, they can be successful. We sometimes need them to believe that themselves. So I'm just going to provide you with some numbers just for food for thought, just to kind of get you thinking about where we currently are. So 25, 25 is how many days we have left in until our first GCSE exam. Our exams start on the 15th of May. So we still have three weeks of school time where we can push, we can support, we can guide. So it's not the end. And I think that's a key message to get across to our students. They still have 25 days. 25 days will make a difference. It might not get grade nines, but every little bit counts and every little bit of work they do will help them feel positive, which will help them feel better, which will make them feel better. And that cycle of success will hopefully run into them taking their exams. The number six, that is how many weeks worth of exams our students will take. Now in exam timetable, students may have multiple exams in a day. They may have one exam in the morning and one exam in the afternoon. They may just have one in the day. They may have some days as we go through the exam period where they have a day with no exams. But this just shows the, the intensity that students are expected to work at. They're expected to, to revise, to participate in exams, be ready for them the next exam. So we like to talk about being organised and later on I will talk about some organisation techniques that hopefully you can promote with our students at home. The number 24. The number 24 is actually the potential amount of an exams a student could potentially take. Uh, as I said, this won't be all students, but here is a breakdown. If a student will obviously tackle their English and literature exams, they will have their maths exams, potentially further maths. We have some students who take triple science, 
We have history, geography, and potentially MFL. Now, obviously, this this depends purely on the subjects that your child has taken. You may find that in some subjects they don't have any exams, especially if it's more vocational and practical subject. You may find that they have already done an exam, but they may have the opportunity to do a reset during the summer to try to improve that grade. So again, I just wanted to highlight the, the intensity of the few weeks that are coming up, just again to make sure you have that knowledge. You know that these students are coming to into school to do an exam, to go home, to then get prepared for another exam. So we need, need to make sure we're being supportive. We've got that arm around their shoulders. We're, we're asking how they get on without putting too much pressure on them. 100%. This is all about attendance. As I've stated, we've got about three more weeks until the exam window starts. Um, as I've said, exams, some will happen in the morning and the afternoon, we will still expect 100% attendance. Attendance is key. Attendance is the pupil in lesson learning about knowledge for their exams, learning about exam skills for their exams, having the opportunity to actually speak to a member of staff to get that vital bit of advice that might move them up an entire grade. So 100% attendance is what we would be expecting all of our year 11s to hit during this the next few weeks. And this is exactly why 73% of pupils who have over 95% attendance achieve five or more GCSEs at grades nine to four. Now, yes, you might be thinking, well, my, my child hasn't been in school um, for the last few weeks. They've had maybe some time off throughout the year due to illnesses, doctor's appointments. We can't dwell on the past. We need to look to the future. We have those three weeks left to build up before the exam and then the time during the exams. That is all time that, that pupils can use to get better, to feel better and to hopefully be more successful in the future. The 30th of Jam, June, apologies. This is the date when our year 11s will leave us. So students will take their exams, and as I said, they will be spread out. However, some of our students will still have the opportunity to, to complete and to alter some of their coursework, especially in some of those vocational subjects. Students in year 11 will be expected to stay with us until the 30th of of June and during that time from the 15th of May to the 30th of June we will be doing exams we will be preparing for exams but as students start to finish examinations we will we'll be looking to do alternative work and you will receive some additional information about that as we get closer to that date but every single moment counts that's what I need is to take from this being in lesson taking that bit of knowledge asking that bit of advice so as much as you can get pupils through our gates, the more support we can offer them, the more guidance we can give them. So that's what this session is about. It's about you being informed, having a little bit more knowledge about the examinations that are going to take place, what we're expecting our students to do, uh, what we've already spoken to our students about in terms of the importance of grades and how we want them to be successful. So what I'm now going to start to talk about are some of the ways that you can support us and you can help in terms of making sure these pupils are ready for that intense pressure of those examinations. The first way is being up to date. Obviously we use Arbor as a information system so please access that please have a look at your child's attendance their positive behavior points their negative behavior points homework and start asking those questions we then have seneca and sparks maths are two amazing online homework platforms seneca is used by a variety of the subjects within our school and they are tailor-made courses for specific exam boards so a student can go through specific knowledge and questions in preparation for their exam. Sparks Maths is, again, an amazing website that allows students to participate in answering, taking quizzes, 
from that instant data, they are given feedback on where they need to improve. They're then given videos on how to make those improvements. So please make sure you have this, a discussion with your child. Do they have access to Seneca? Are they using Sparks Maths? And if they are not, guide them to either myself, Mr. Girling, or to their class teacher or tutor, and we will be able to make sure that they have access to both of those websites. We want to leave nothing to chance. That's the concept. We want all students to be as prepared as possible. We provide a number of resources for our students. We offer time both before and after school. We offer specific academic mentoring throughout the day from our year team and from members of staff. We also provide physical resources to support them in their assembly. Tomorrow, I will be providing them with a resource revision folder, which is simply a folder with some lined paper, uh, some flashcards, highlighter pen, just so we know that they have some revision resources at, at home. And if they require and request some additional, obviously, all they need to do is speak to the year team and we can hopefully pass that on. In terms of additional support that we offer, as mentioned, we use, we do our preschool and post school sessions. Uh, and I will show you a timetable of the current offering that we have at the moment. We talk a lot about revision skills. We talk about that in lessons. We talk about that during tutor. So students being in school, but also on time, being punctual to form time in the morning. That is where we give a lot of information. If your child is late, that 15, 20 minutes late, they are potentially missing out on some key information. We have some academic mentoring and some tutoring that is currently taking place and we are looking to extend that over the upcoming weeks and students will be notified if that is the case. We have our English and math support and then we have our booster sessions. So these are sessions that we run just before an examination is taking place. So if an exam is in the morning at nine o'clock we will offer a booster session from around half past eight where students are in a session with their class teacher or the head of that faculty and they're given those last little bits of advice so again making sure students attend all of these opportunities is vital to hopefully them making that next step in being successful the table in front of you shows our current provision in terms of before school and after school. This is likely to change over the upcoming weeks with the intensity moving up as obviously we are getting closer to our examinations. But as you can see from this list, we as a school are offering a variety of sessions for students. We are also offering Saturday sessions. So your child may have received a letter or yourself may have received an email offering the opportunity to come in on a Saturday for those few hours just to use every opportunity that we can. During the Easter holidays, we again offered revision sessions. So hopefully some of your children have, have taken the opportunity and have found it useful. But as mentioned, it's all a about taking those opportunities. Three weeks left, three weeks of opportunities in front of them. So three weeks of us as a school promoting them, but yourselves at home, making sure you have those discussions. Are they taking the opportunity to go to the independent study room at the end of the day to use some of the resources, maybe a Chromebook or a computer to access Sparks Maths? Are they attending the geography session? first at break two with Mr Barlow to take that last bit of information that might be extremely useful in their, their first exam. So again this is providing you knowledge this is what we are doing in school and any support that you can offer to to push this with your with your child would be extremely useful as I said taking every opportunity they can. Now I have spoken to our lead in maths and I lead in English and they have very kindly presented me with some top tips in terms of what we 
believe our students could do to be successful in maths and English. So these are our top tips from our maths lead. I'll just give you a bit of time to just have a read of those yourselves. And as I said, this video will be uploaded onto the school website or passed on to yourself at a later date. As you can see by this advice, it's all about practice. It's about doing revision, not just reading a book. And again, I'm going to talk a little bit more about suitable revision techniques later. But as you can also see at the bottom, we are offering that support. We now need to make sure that students are accessing as much of this support as possible. And with your guidance and with your promotion at home, hopefully students will continue to arrive at these support sessions and continue to move forward and be successful. And then the second part of advice, this was taken from our English lead. And the first one I'd like to draw your attention to is that first point, lessons. All lesson content has been specifically planned by your class teacher. Again, that promotion of attendance, being in every lesson really counts. What you will also be able to do, uh, and again, this may be a conversation, um, is students are able to access their Microsoft Teams account. Within those accounts, members of staff tend to actually submit the presentations that they've previously used in lessons. So in the worst case, if your child is unable to access school due to illness, um, please ask them to access their MS Teams for that subject or on the general channel, they should then be able to access the PowerPoint slides that they have missed. And obviously they can then make sure that there are no gaps uh, for when they return back to their lesson or for any future examinations. So I'm now going to move on to a bit of advice that we we can give to you and you can hopefully have these conversations with pupils at home. The first one is understanding that exam examination boards are very transparent in terms of what content students need to know. Each exam board will have specifications. These specifications are a list of knowledge that would be expected. So for OCR, GCSE Computer Science, you would be able to access their website, access the correct um, course, and you would be able to see a list of the knowledge required to tackle both of those exams. We obviously in lesson talk a lot about specifications. We talk about specifications as we move throughout the course, but it's a very simple way for students to check that they have covered all of the potential content. A technique later on explains using the specification to highlight the strengths and weaknesses of pupils and then to use that information to really prioritise future review. As mentioned, these are all easily accessible websites. The key would be for the pupil to know which exam board they are using and the name of their qualification. We would hope by now that the students would know that, but if they are unsure or if you would like some additional information, again, please send myself an email and I'll be able to pass that information on to you. So our main section is talking about revision and revision is something that we need students to do and we need them to get it right we sometimes hear stories that students are doing hours and hours of revision at home and that is absolutely fantastic because we can see the effort we can see the time being spent but what we need to do is make sure that, that revision is effective is it doing its job is it doing what it needs to do so in this section of the webinar, I'm going to talk about some of the revision techniques that we promote to students. Uh, just again, to make sure you have that knowledge, you can then again 
hopefully start asking and having some of these conversations with students at home. And hopefully give you the confidence to maybe get a little bit involved in supporting their revision. So when we talk about revision, I like to use this visualization of a circle. What we tend to find is a lot of our pupils are extremely good with the making stage of revision resources. We see lots of mind maps, lots of flashcards, but we need to ensure that pupils are using those resources appropriately. So we make our resources, we then memorize them, we go through them, we try to embed them into our long term memory. We then practice using this knowledge by answering exam style questions, questions from Sparks Maths or from Seneca. Really useful instant feedback. We then test that knowledge through past papers, through exam questions. We then review our tests in terms of how we've achieved and we go back to our revision material and to see if we need to make any alterations. Have we missed a key fact? Have we missed a key piece of information? Memory is interesting because memory is something that you need to work on. Memory is something that you need to use and practice constantly. We provide information to students constantly. And as you can imagine, five lessons in the day, it can be quite daunting. So what we need students to do is to bring that information back to the front of their brains. And we do that using our recall tickets at the start of every lesson. However, we also need them to do that through revision. And that is how revision works, by constantly reviewing previous information, bringing it to the front of your brain will build long term memory. We build long term memory through high retrieval, the information is likely to be stored, therefore meaning it, it becomes easier to access at a later date when, for example, answering exam questions. There is quite a lot of scientific research into this and we do talk a lot about the forgetting curve. And this just shows the, the, the need for repetition. It should not just be, I've revised maths, I've revised algebraic formulas, and then we leave it alone. The constant repetition is what builds our long term memory. And what we do is we revise a topic, we put it to one side. We then and go back to that topic to see what we have remembered. So in terms of supporting revision and effective revision, there are lots of strategies that we talk about and use in school, and that's what I'm just going to introduce you to now. The first one, as previously mentioned, Sparks Maths. A fantastic tool for pupils as it allows them to watch videos to build up skills and knowledge but instantly allows them to take quizzes and assessments and to get instant feedback in terms of how they have progressed therefore identifying instantly where they need to improve so please make sure that students can access sparks maths make sure they have their account, make sure they are accessing it and doing the work. Again, it could be a simple conversation at home. Have you done your Sparks Maths this week? How are you getting on with your Sparks Maths? What's been identified of something that you need to improve? Previously mentioned Seneca, again, extremely useful, especially because courses are tailor made to specifications. You can find your specific specification and access that content, and that should automatically be set up through our homework procedures. So again, having that conversation with your child, are they completing Seneca? You should have hopefully received an email um, last week or in the previous weeks inviting you to, to join Seneca as a parent for a student. That should then give you the opportunity to track their access of Seneca and are they completing their tasks? A third online resource is Quizlet. We know students like the physical flashcards. Quizlet is a digital version of this. So instead of having to carry these flashcards around, they can access this on their devices at home. 
And the good thing about each of these free resources are that they are all digital. These resources can be accessed on Chromebooks, on laptops, on computers and on mobile phones. So whilst that child maybe sat on the bus for that 20 minutes, they could be on Sparks Math, they could be on Seneca. If students do not have the resources at home, as previously mentioned, we have the library, which is open before school and after school and during break times. So again, try to promote as many different revision materials and resources as you can. Our next revision technique is organising information. Using simple box diagrams to split information into key sections will support memory and recall because it allows us to create links to information. Information we've previously learnt, we can link it to new information. That is then brought to the forefront of our brains. We can then use that information because we're aware of the link and hopefully answer a question. The use of flow diagrams, maybe if we're doing history and we need to understand key dates, presenting it in a way that is easy for us to read, easy for us to go back to instead of paragraphs, paragraphs of text. If we're in science and we're looking at some form of routine or some kind, some sort of flow, uh, the water cycle, for example, using diagrams to support learning. We try to condense as much text as we can, removing the barrier of reading huge, quite daunting paragraphs and turning them into simple diagrams, simple notes, a sentence, a definition, an answer to a question, something that will spark that knowledge quickly and is easier to remember than potentially a 10 line paragraph. In terms of these organisation methods, we are currently in the process, and this should hopefully be up and running by Monday, on our school website, I'm creating a Year 11 Revision Hub. This will be a place on the school website for students and yourself to access, and within that hub, students will be able to access folders for each of the subjects they are involved in. Within those folders, we will include past papers, we will include presentations and a variety of resources for them to access. So again, it gives them an opportunity, an opportunity to be successful. My next point is a little bit less about revision, but it's about being organised. And you might be thinking about your child right now and thinking that's exactly what they need. The biggest tip that I always give to my students is being organised. We've just talked about 24 potential exams over the space of five to six weeks. We want to make sure we're maximising the time that we have. So tomorrow during the assembly, when our re revision resource packs are going to be given out, students will also receive this, an A3 revision timetable sheet. This is an opportunity for them to allocate what they're going to revise and when to give them that clear structure. We know what our students and all students can be like. I'm really good at maths, so I'm going to revise lots of maths because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel successful. And that is amazing. I'm not so good at Spanish. I'm going to ignore that and leave it alone. We don't want our students burying their heads in the sand. So by creating a timetable, it gives that clear structure of what students should be doing and when. It also ensures that they are covering, covering all of the required subjects. So during my assembly tomorrow, I'm going to be highlighting this to students and I'm going to be asking them to take this home and to complete it and to fill it in. And what you could do as a parent or carer to support your child is to ask to see it or even support them in filling, filling it in, maybe placing it on the fridge or on the living room wall and then checking to see it's Monday of week commencing the 21st of April. Have you done some maths revision? Fantastic. Here's a big tick. Even just that praise could be the reward that some of our students need to really push them to get 
them to do that little bit extra revision. And as you can see, I've also given some top tips on how to revise effectively. Spending that 30 to 45 minutes, we're not expecting five hours in a row. Our brains don't work like that. But by allocating specific time, by making it clear what they should be revising, allows them to be organised. And then as they move towards the 15th of May, they can start to see my first exam is English. Let's increase that intensity of English revision. My PE exam isn't until week five. Let's maybe put a bit of a hold on that for the time being. Allows them to be organised, allows them to know what's coming up in front of them, which sometimes can be quite stressful. This is a way to hopefully alleviate that stress because students will understand what they are doing. So revision techniques, as mentioned before, it's about doing something, not just reading notes. Because we know what our brains are like. Sometimes they're like sponges and we can absorb all of this information. However, sometimes, unfortunately, it just disappears as soon as we learn it. So what what we need to remember is our brain is a muscle and we need to work our brain. We need to practice. We need to go over routines again and again and again. So when we talk about active revision, we talk about doing things with information, not, as I've said, just reading a revision guide. So here are some key techniques that we think are extremely successful for our students. The first one being flashcards. Those small index cards with maybe a keyword on the front and a definition on the back. And flashcards are extremely useful because they're a good indicator of how you are getting on. The correct way to use a flashcard would be to read the definition, to verbally respond, to see if you get it correct. If you get the answer correct, you place the card in one pile. If you get it incorrect, you place it in a different pile. You then instantly know which words you can and can't remember. When you then come to revise it next time, you purely focus on the words that you couldn't remember because you do not want to waste time with the bits that you already know. And you follow that routine again and again and again. We get rid of that forgetting curve. So in terms of making flashcards, and flashcards are part of the revision pack that is being given out tomorrow, it can be simply a definition. Keyword on one side, definition on the next. It could be a mass formula, a chemical formula, maybe even an icon or an image, a question maybe from a past paper. The key to flashcards are making them simple, but making them useful. So here are some examples of some flashcards. Short, snappy bullet points, just the information that we need, not huge, complicated paragraphs. We want simple definitions that students can remember. And flashcards are a fantastic way for you to be involved in revision students creating the flashcard and you grabbing that pile, reading out that definition and checking to see if they can verbally give it back to you. You, again, could create some initial notes, create some keywords, and it's about repetition. So again, flashcards, an extremely useful way to support revision. Previously, I talked about specification, understanding what's going to be on the exam. If we know what potentially might be on the exam in terms of content, let's check to see how we feel about that content. Taking that specification and highlighting it. Green, I'm absolutely sure I know that fact. Orange, yellow, not quite sure I need to put a little bit of work in. Or red, I don't feel confident at all. That is going to be a priority when it comes to my revision. And we can do that by taking the specification or by using a simple rag rating. And again, that is something students can speak to their members of staff about to get that specification and something for them to look at. As I've said, it's about identifying gaps in learning, gaps in knowledge. If it's green, we leave it alone. We feel comfortable. If it's yellow or red, that needs to be our focus of revision, using our time wisely. We can then take our information and we can transform it. As I've said, we do not do well at learning big blocks of paragraphs. So we can take our information and we can present it in a variety of ways. We can use images, we can use keywords, and if we need to learn 
happy words, maybe we can turn it into something that becomes more memorable, such as a story. Maybe we can turn our big blocks of information into something that looks slightly more presentable. As you can see on the board, this would be quite wordy. Maybe we change it into something more structured. And as you can see there, knowledge organizer. Students have knowledge organizers. They are a fantastic tool. They are this knowledge on a page, taking that knowledge organizer, reading it, and then maybe rewriting some of those notes, converting it into images or graphics or a mind map. The information is there. It's doing something with it. We then have our mind maps where we get rid of lots of our text and we use images instead because our brains work amazingly well with images. We have our time wheel, our note wheel, five minute blocks. How much can you say about that topic in that five minutes? And you repeat it again and again. A technique we use is black pen, red pen. Write down as much as you can about a topic in black. Then here are some notes, fill in the gaps in red. Two weeks later, let's try that again. See if you can write more in black. Find out where those gaps are. And finally, our note wheel. Now they're all quite paper-based and some of our students we know may not enjoy revising that way. So there are other opportunities. Small post-it notes. Post-it notes are again going to be in our resource folder tomorrow. Place them around the room with key facts that they bump into every now and again. Maybe a podcast. They obviously if they have a mobile phone, they can record themselves talking, record those literacy quotes they need from Macbeth and listen to them again and again. And there are loads of videos out there for in on YouTube that provides that kind of auditory way to to, to gather information. The concepts of using you as parents and carers and the rest of the family to support revision. As I've said, getting those flashcards out, reading those definitions, reducing that information, getting rid of all of that text that can be quite daunting, or even being super creative and creating a, a rap, a song, something that creates that kind of brain worm that is stuck in their brains. YouTube, we have found numerous resources, Macbeth quotes, raps, that are just really interesting to watch. And because of that lyrical nature, the rhyme, it tends to be a lot easier for students to remember. So these are some revision top tips for our students. Draw up that revision timetable. Be organized. Make sure you know what you're covering. To exercise, and I'm going to continue with that in a second when we talk about well-being. Do not just be sit, sat down for hour after hour after hour. We have to look after our body as well as our mind. Find that quiet space. We can't revise if we've got music blaring the TV on our latest Netflix series. If we're going to revise for that 30 minutes, that should be our focus for that 30 minutes. Make it important. Use the morning time. We know some of our students are night owls, but we tend to be more productive in the morning. And spice up that revision. Do something new, do something different. We should look at information at least three ways. We have our class, our lesson, we, re we revise maybe through flashcards, and then maybe we do a mind map. That is an opportunity to build that core memory. So I'm gonna talk about wellbeing. And again, this is something that we are gonna to talk to our students about, how to deal with exam stress. We know it's a stressful time we've spoken about how many exams some of our students may be taking. So these are just some of the techniques and some of the advice that we give some of our students. The first one is just believing in yourself, being positive, get rid of that ne negativity. Yes, you might have struggled. Yes, you may feel like the world's on your shoulders, but let's, let's get through it together. Let's try to push through, have a bit of confidence. And I think sometimes that's what we need. We sometimes need that element of success to build success. And those little positive comments that you can bring in at home. Fantastic, you've done your, mark, your math sparks homework. You've done your Seneca. I can see you making some flashcards. Do you mind if I have a look? And really emphasize that positivity. To exercise, as I said, we wanna look after the body as well as the mind. A diet, have that healthy diet. Our body is a machine. We need to make sure we fuel it. 
we do need to keep things in perspective. If we do not do well in an exam, it isn't the end of the world. OK, there will be opportunities. It just might take a bit of a sidestep. We might take it a little bit longer. But to talk to people. We sent out a questionnaire to our year 11 pupils before half term. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't receive many responses. So again, please promote that to your child. It is about if they are feeling nervous and where they can potentially go to get some additional advice. And sleep. We need sleep to build those memory connections, to take the information, the knowledge from the day. So try to promote students going to bed, to sleep, to get rid of some of that blue light from our phones, from our electrical device. Again, let's try to make sure we're in that positive frame of mind moving into those exams. Before the exams then, this is the advice that we give. Be organised. We do not want to be turning up an exam five minutes late, ten minutes late, looking stressed out in the morning, looking for pens. The night before, check to make sure you're ready. Check to make sure you know what your exams are. Uniform sorted. Set that alarm and go to bed. And that's difficult sometimes because of the nerves. But just being in that right frame of mind. And then on the day, arrive on time. Get that mind mindset right. Be at that booster session. Take that opportunity. But also take the time to relax. Using that time wisely by being organised. Yes, I'm going to do 30 minutes of maths, but then I'm going to have 45 minutes an hour. Just, just to go for a walk, just to listen to some music, just to play with a sibling. And avoid any other stressful situations. We want our students to be in a positive mood or as positive as they can be. We want to provide them with support, the tools that they can use to be successful. So finally, some of the questions that, that were sent through. And I will check my email account to see if I've received any of ones. But as I've mentioned, if there are any additional questions, please send me an email and I will respond. One question was about if a child is ill on the day of the exam in terms of being too ill to come to school. Um, this is something that's from the exam board. So again, this is not from as, as a school. Um, if a student is too ill to come to school, obviously uh, we can look at getting doctor's notes in terms of that. However, for a student to be able to gain a qualification, they must have completed at least 25% of those examinations. So if in maths you have free test papers, they would have at least need to have completed at least probably one of them. If a child is too ill to complete any of the exams within that subject, unfortunately, um, the student would probably achieve a U in that subject. So our biggest bit of advice there is it is always better to try to get the student to come into school to attempt the test to do it. The fingers crossed, they feel a little bit better. Maybe it's just pre-examination nerves and when they get sat down, it, it goes away slightly. But it's always better if they come in. In terms of keeping our children calm through the time, I think that is just about being supportive. It's about being asking those questions, having those, those honest conversations. How are you feeling? Is there anything I can do to support you? Do you maybe need just a little bit of time just by yourself? Asking them how they're getting on with revision, but in a proactive way. Sometimes our students like the nudge. They need it. They want it. They want to know people care. They want to know people want them to be successful. How can we make them confident for GCSEs, even though um, he has done past papers? That for me, it's practice. Practice, practice, practice. And the biggest resource our students have are us as teachers. Speak to your class teacher. They will be the expert in you and in the exam. They will know what you need to focus on. But the more practice we can do, the better you will feel. The other way is just being prepared. If you feel prepared, if you feel like you are ready, you will automatically feel a little bit more confident. And I think it's also being positive. Giving them those positive comments. Fantastic, you've done this, you're moving forward. Yes, let's forget about the past. I can now see you're putting that 100% in. And that final question, how can we as a family support? I think it's being there. 
I think it again is offering maybe some of your time if you can. I know sometimes that can be difficult to do some flashcards to check over a mind map to maybe ask them some questions, but being supportive, being positive, allowing them to just have those frank conversations with you, but also being proactive. As I've said, looking at Arbor, checking Mark uh, Sparks Maths, looking at Seneca. Also, sometimes being prepared to have those difficult conversations. Are, are you revising? We feel like you need to push yourself that little bit more. As I said, sometimes our students actually want that nudge. They just need that gentle reminder. So having those kind of conversations with them. So my final thoughts, and hopefully you found this session in interesting and you feel you have that knowledge. So therefore you feel you're a little bit more in the loop. It is part, is it impossible? No, it's not. We have three weeks left and the time throughout the exams. We have all of those opportunities before school, after school, and every single lesson during the day. We have those resources outside of school, our Seneca, our Sparks Maths. It's taking those opportunities and using them, using that time you have left, being organised with that revision timetable. Anything is possible. But you need, need that hard work and you need that graft. You need to put the time in. Now is the time to put that 100% effort in. Six weeks or so, 100% effort could make a massive difference to the rest of that student's life in terms of opportunities in the future. My biggest bit of advice to students, and this is something that I would definitely be speaking about tomorrow, is we know some of our students are like ostriches. They bury their head in the sand. It's too late. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't catch up. We don't want that. We want that positivity. We still have time. We can still make those changes, those gains. It's being positive. So we talk about being a meerkat. Looking for those opportunities, looking for that advice, looking for that next step that's going to move you forward. And the biggest thing that I say to students, I talk about a mirror moment. I want all of my students, when they get their results in the summer, to be able to look in the mirror and say, I've done my best. I've worked my socks off. I've used every opportunity I can. I have done all I can do. And if they can look in the mirror and say that, they should be able to give themselves a pat on the back because that's all we can expect. But I want them to feel like they have done that. They need to feel like they have pushed themselves. And this was a quote that I showed the year 11s in my last assembly. And I think that's important because we can't dwell on the past. We can't dwell on the Mach 1 results, the Mach 2 results, what we did at the start of year 11, where maybe we didn't use our time effectively. We look at here, we look at now, and we look at the opportunities that we have in front of us. And we need to make sure that we get our students to use as many of them as possible. So that's the end of our online webinar in terms of supporting you, supporting your child with their GCSEs. Hopefully you found it interesting, you found it informative, it's given you some advice on some conversations that you can maybe have at home with your child. It's hopefully giving you some advice in terms of techniques you can maybe guide them to in terms of their revision. But hopefully it's helping you to have that dialogue, that communication. You now know what students are going through. You now know what students are about to go through over the next few weeks. So be supportive. But also be supportive in a positive way in terms of moving forward. Thank you very much for attending. Um, as I've said, if you have got any additional questions, um, please feel free to email me at james.girling at ellisgilfordschool.org.uk. Um, if you would like some specific information, again, please email me. Um, as I've said, 
and hopefully you have found this event useful. Um, if you would, uh, I may potentially hand out a MS forms in the near future to get some feedback. Obviously, we're always looking to improve what we do, ready for future cohorts as well. So any advice, any feedback would be absolutely fantastic. But I finally like to say thank you very much for attending. This shows that you want to be involved and that you are there to support your child. And I think that's a big thing for them to know as well, that you took your time to listen and to take some information on board. You're now more than wel welcome to, I'm going to stop the recording and you're more than welcome to, to leave the meeting. Uh, again,